Hi, in this video, I want to look at the evolution of possibly the most useful of all the zone fossils, the cephalopods. And in particular, the cephalopods that have these distinctive coiled chambered shells, a group we call the ammonoids. Now, part of this group are the ammonites. And the ammonites are superb zone fossils, in particular for the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. They allow the period, this period of geological time to be subdivided in really quite an a accurate and detailed way. Now this group of cephalopods called the ammonoids all have a distinctive feature. They have a chambered shell. Often that's coiled, but it's those chambers that are key to understanding the evolutionary patterns. You can see on the image here the different chambers, each separated by a wall. This wall grows after the main shell, and where that wall is in contact with the main shell, it creates a mark that we call a suture line. And it's this suture line that changes with evolution. Over time, the suture line became more and more complex. So it got a more uh, wrinkled, crinkly structure that you can see in this image. You can see the marks left on the inside of the shell. And this particular specimen, you can see where the end of one of these chambers is and just how complex a structure it is. The greater complexity gives the ammonite shell more strength. A bit like the way corrugated iron works. Now, when we look at the ammonoid group, there are three distinct types. And each of these types is distinguished by the shape of its suture line, which changed over geological time. The earliest form that we look at are the goniotites. These are followed by the serotites. And the final group that evolved were the ammonites. For the A-level, you need to be able to distinguish between these different groups of ammonites. Let's have a look at them in detail. The earliest of these ammonites that we study are the goniotites. And these have a very simple suture line. The images shown here show quite an almost sinuous pattern of sutures. These are really important zone fossils in the Carboniferous period. They appeared in the Upper Devonian and became extinct at the end of the Permian. A later development were the serotites. These evolved in the Permian period and became an important zone fossil for the Triassic. By the end of the Triassic, they were extinct. But if you look at the suture line uh, of these animals, you can see that it's a combination of a smooth curved part of the suture we call the saddle. And the lower part of the suture is starting to develop more complexity more fr and become more frilly. The final group to evolve were the ammonites. And ammonites have a distinctive set of, of very complex suture lines. These two evolved in the Permian, became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous, but they really became uh, 
a incredibly diverse group in the Jurassic and Cretaceous, which allows those periods to be really very accurately dated by their zone fossil content. This diagram summarizes these changes. The Orthoceros uh, type at the bottom there, the oldest ones, virtually a straight line. As we progress further in time, we see uh, a gonia type suture with very simple lobes and saddles. The serectitic type, type of suture with these smooth, undivided saddles, but with these crinkly lobes. And finally then, uh, the ammonites with their complex sutures. Cre these crenulations on both the lobes and saddles of the suture line. To give an example of just how diverse uh, this group became, the Jurassic uh, period itself is subdivided into 60 different zones based on the ammonites. Each of those is less than a million years in duration. All these different features of ammonites, the uh, ornaments on the shells, the ribbing, um, how their shells are coiled, all changed, but the key pattern is this development of the suture line. Now these animals make such good zone fossils for a number of reasons. They're fasces free. They uh, can swim freely around in the ocean uh, and they can be preserved as a result in a range of different environments and therefore sediments. Their evolution was rapid. There was a large number of species that evolved, but then became extinct relatively quickly. Each of these stages as well uh, is easily recognized, easily identifiable. And they make superb fossils. They had hard parts. Uh, they occurred in vast numbers, uh, spread all over the globe. So they're very common fossils to find. So, in conclusion, this group of fossils, the ammonoids, and their evolutionary changes allow us to date really quite accurately the rocks in which they're found. But the key to understanding it is to recognize these changing patterns of suture lines. Don't forget your interesting question that you can bring along to class. I'll see you then.